Hello everyone, today I want to talk to you very briefly about lenses. There's a lot of stuff on the internet about lenses, what you need, what you must have, what you should have, what the ideals are. Great, it would be wonderful if we could all afford super F1 cinema lenses with beautiful gears and all that sort of stuff. But can you actually tell when you get to the cinema what lenses a film has been shot on? Or more often than not these days, when you're looking at something on your phone, uh, on the internet, can you really tell what lenses they've been shot on? I would argue in the cinema, yes, perhaps, because the cameras are bigger, they are designed to react to what's going through the lenses uh, in a lot more a lot more detail, a lot more crisp way. There's a lot more image to actually fill when you get into the cinema. However, once you're doing something like this, it was only ever going to be seen on the internet, probably by someone on the bog on their phone. The difference between a piece of glass, uh, so for example, my favourite interview lens ever, the Sony FE 50mm <laughs> prime lens, which is 200 quid, something like that. By far my favourite uh, lens for interviews and things like that. Could anybody tell the difference between that and, say, the G Master f1.2 Sony lens? That costs a lot more money. I would argue there's very little visual difference by the time you've squashed it onto the internet. Having said that, I have got a box of prime lenses here. Everything from 20mm f1.8, uh, 35mm 1.8. Again, these are the, the cheap FE Sony versions. The 50 1.8, the most useful. Uh, there's 85mm, which we're shooting this on now. And this thing, which I picked up recently because I just love being a bit further away. This is the Samyang uh, 135 f1.8. FE, um, which is a really lovely bit of glass, and it's yeah, it makes for some beautiful interviews with that background really pushed beautifully out of the way. However, this brings me on to another point I wanted to talk about, which is you've got this incredible bokeh, this insane out of focus area behind your subject. Is it always useful, uh, or indeed the best thing for the shot? So, in this case, you can see I'm here in the dining room. Uh, there's outside behind me. It's not too far behind me, so it's not too spectacularly out of focus. You can tell I'm actually in this environment and I'm not sat in front of a green screen. I was watching a TV program the other day and the interviewee had gone, and camera crew, had gone to a specific location so that they could see floodwaters in the background. The camera person had shot it on a similar camera to this. This is a Sony FX6, a so full frame camera, obviously very pleased with their full frame glass and their incredible out of focus areas behind. However, the effect was that the person when lit looked like they were superimposed on the background that was so out of focus you couldn't really tell what it was. So they'd gone to the effort of travelling to this location and the, the, the presenter or interviewee in this case was specifically referencing what was going on behind them which you couldn't see uh, because it was so out of focus. So my sort of tip for the day or two tips for the day are you don't have to spend the ultimate amount of money to get a perfectly usable, brilliant, sharp image from your lenses. And the second one is choose your lenses and your f-stop based on what you actually want to see. Because putting it all out of focus, yeah, it looks nice in the viewfinder, but think of the audience. Do they actually want to see more of what you're stood in front of? Um, or your interviewer is your subject is stood in front of. So that's two little tips today um, about lenses. So I uh, hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching.